This video will give a short overview of the Applied Logic Engineering USB to GoPro Hero adapter. Uh, as you can see, the adapter consists of a six foot long cable uh, terminating on one end with a USB, standard USB connection for plugging into any standard PC, and on the other end, a 30 pin uh, standard GoPro Hero uh, type connection. All the active electronics are housed in the USB side of the uh, connection and uh, essentially this is the only hardware component that's necessary for connecting the PC to the uh, GoPro Hero camera. To get started with the connection um, you simply connect the USB side of the cable uh, directly to any available USB port on your computer and uh, once that's done the driver will automatically load if you're using Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7. If you're using an operating system such as Linux, Macintosh, or Android, um, there are drivers available, but they have to be manually installed. Uh, the Windows uh, drivers will automatically install uh, based on the Windows recognizing the adapter when it's plugged in. The other end of the adapter cable is simply plugged into the 30 pin connector on the rear of the GoPro camera as such. Uh, when it's properly connected you'll hear it click uh, into place letting you know that it's positively seated. Once you've successfully connected your camera to your PC using the adapter, you can begin using the software by starting the application in Windows. Uh, when you do that, this is the initial screen that will be presented, and as you can see, there's a number of things uh, that uh, are presented. In the upper left corner is the uh, COM port selection that's being used to, for communication with the GoPro camera. The software will automatically select the correct COM port and will connect to the camera without any intervention. However, there is a manual override that you can use uh, if you're using multiple adapters on the same PC. Uh, in which you would have to manually configure which COM port was uh, being used by each adapter. On the right hand upper portion of the screen you will see two buttons for manual control um, and as you can see if I click on uh, power the camera on manually you'll hear three beeps uh, when the camera turns on and uh, at this point it is powered up and will either begin uh, recording video or taking snapshots depending on how the camera is configured. Similarly, if I want to manually control the uh, power to the camera being turned off, I can click on the power camera off button. You'll hear a series of beeps indicating that the camera has powered off. Directly below the manual control buttons, uh, is a grouping uh, indicating uh, camera setup. Um, these are two kind of instructional um, screens to sh indicate how the camera should be configured uh, for both uh, correctly uh, configuring the camera for video snapshot mode or for configuring the camera for the one button mode. Uh, if I click on the right hand uh, question mark next to the correct video snapshot mode um, I get a window that indicates uh, basically the key instructions for how to configure the GoPro camera for the correct recording mode. This needs to be done in order to get the camera uh, configured correctly for use with the software. Similarly, if I want to uh, learn how to properly set the GoPro camera for one button mode, I would click the question mark next to that statement and the software will bring up a window indicating uh, basically how to successfully configure the camera for one button operation. Uh, after the camera has been successfully uh, configured we can then move to the time lapse section of the software. The Applied Logic GoPro Hero software uh, has a sophisticated time lapse function which can be used to control the camera in a time lapse recording or time lapse uh, snapshot mode. Uh, there are a number of parameters that you would set here indicated in the lower right hand portion of the software. Um, the first parameter that you would set would be start time lapse. This is actually the date and the time at which the time lapse recording session would begin. And then right below that is the stop time lapse. 
uh, which would be the comparable date and time at which the uh, session would end. Uh, below that you will see the uh, time between uh, indicated in minutes. This is the length of time between actual recordings, either video or snapshots, uh, during the time lapse. And below that is the length to record, which is indicated in seconds. Uh, this is the uh, length of time that the video recording would occur for each session uh, and or the, uh, the, the length of time that we would take snapshots with the software. Um, as you can see here, we have the software configured for beginning uh, the time-lapse session at 10.45.53 a.m. and ending at 10.55.53 a.m. If I click the checkbox for enabled now, uh, what the software will indicate is it's waiting to start, meaning that it's waiting for the initial start time lapse date and time uh, to occur in real time. As we approach the start time lapse uh, time and date, um, you will see that the software, uh, when it hits the specific time indicated, will begin to uh, start the recording session. As you can see, uh, the uh, indicated have gone to recording, the camera has turned on, and you can see the um, progress bars uh, on the lower part of the screen. So there's the first 10 second uh, record that we've made in video. As you can see now, we're beginning to time off the time between the one minute between recording sessions, uh, and that progress is being indicated by the uh, progress bar to the right of the time between. Uh, indication on the screen. When uh, we have hit one minute here, the time-lapse software will begin recording the next 10 second length uh, of video recording and this process will continue to repeat uh, for the duration uh, until we reach the stop time-lapse date and time. As you can see here as we approach the end of the one minute session uh, for the time between, the software goes back to recording mode and we indicate uh, on the bottom of the screen there a 10 second, record, 10 second recording session. This process repeats until the stop time lapse date and time is achieved. As we reach the stop time lapse date and time uh, you'll see the camera still operating in time lapse mode standing by uh, and there we've just achieved the uh, date and time that was indicated by the stop time lapse. And so the text box to the right of the enabled checkbox shows that the time lapse session is now completed. So, in conclusion, what we've been able to show you here is uh, direct control of a Hero or Hero 2 camera via the PC uh, and via the applied logic adapter that provides the hardware connection to the system. Um, as we mentioned before, the adapter uh, can certainly be used for custom software development. Uh, there are no DLLs or no ActiveX objects required. The only thing that you need to do in your software is open a serial port and issue relatively simple serial commands. And we'd be happy to work with you on your project. Thanks for your time.